shake tube again. I'm just going to very quickly record something just because I want it in my head where uh, in this in this scene of Hamlet, because we're doing Shakespeare, this long, long, long scene of Hamlet that goes from, that starts off with the King and Queen and Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and we kind of pop into Polonius. We get back to Guildenstern, uh, 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 Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and getting questioned by Hamlet, and him figuring out, oh, you guys have been sent for. It's like, yes, you were sent for. And this is what he says. I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discoveries and your secrecy to the king and queen. Molt no feather. I have late, but wherefore I know not. Lost all my mirth, forgone all my customs of exercise. And indeed goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave overhanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire, why, it appears nothing to me but a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is man! How noble in reason, how infinite in facilities, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action how like an angel, in apprehension how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights me not, nor woman neither, though by your smiling it seems you say so. And, uh, He's smiling because uh, he, he knows that the players are coming and that Hamlet seems to be describing a stage, though a uh, sterile promontory and the firmament, and almost talking like he's talking about the globe, as in the, the theater, the globe. Uh, and indeed, we get into theater politics and how the adult players are getting driven from the stage and have to kind of scrape for the living in the countryside because the child actors are now becoming uh, the thing, the fashion. And, you know, Shakespeare himself knowing that he is subject to fashion, that he his work can get, goes up high and then can grow, go down to a point where it's so low, so disposable, people aren't interested in anymore that his friends can actually publish his works because there's no um, theater companies who are like, oh, no, these are still worth money for us to put on as going concerns. We can just publish them and forget them or... We can publish them as the first folio, and they can be uh, remembered for many, many years. So, yes, that is my that is my little bit of Hamlet today. I just wanted, you know, that speech still punches, still punches. And, you know, there's a disappointment there from Hamlet of, oh, you, my friends, have been co-opted by the king and the queen, who I think have murdered my father. It's like, what a piece of work is man. And, you know, his, his, you, you get the sense of his idealism, a youthful idealism, and how it's been it's been crushed by this by this what's happened with his father like something really rotten is happening this is this is a young man realizing that his world um isn't the ideal great world maybe that he thought you get a real sense of kind of maybe there's a hero worship of his father in here and that his father fell prey to this uh really kind of makes his world crumble and that his father is sort of that's his identity in a way him Hamlet, as looking at Hamlet Sr., it's like, you know, that that sort of that sort of interplay. At least that's what comes up this time. Uh, and just, you know, the whole thing again of, I was talking about how Polonius, who de definitely does make very comedic things here, he is kind of a gray man. He's a functionary for the king. And yeah, now Rosencrantz and Gilderstern, they've also seem to be spies for the king. It's like, is any of my world real? Are any of my friends actually my friends? Or are they all just players who've been hired? And he's about to hire some actual players who, to to that point, seem actually more honest to him, perhaps, because he knows that they are actors. They actually are actors versus all these people around him who seem to be acting and he can't really trust any of them any more than he seems to be able to trust his own impulses and intuitions. That's what I have for today for Shake Tube 2020.